Hey, Tony from Bike Bear here. It's good to see you. It has been a brutal week getting this F Zero together. The engine came on Monday. Uh, I was waiting on some parts and everything, and I had to customize a ton of parts because I have really specific things in mind on how I want this to work, and I need it functioning really well from the get go. I I can't stop midway through in the couple months ahead that we have planned out for all of the, the video content, I need it to work straight out. So I worked really hard this week to get it up to snuff on where I want it to be. You're gonna love it, it's really great. Uh, I had to go in just a few things. Uh, I wanted the tank lined. I wanted to make sure that it was sealed. So we're gonna do this video on that really quick, but just some other things. I had to make a custom bracket. I had to shorten it because you want this engine lower. Because if you noticed, <laughs> the petcock here was running into the carburetor. And uh, so I had to get an offset for the carburetor. That literally came yesterday and then finalized the position of the engine. Uh, I, but I got everything all connected as far as uh, cables and brakes. I got it all working. Uh, really went through and trued the, the wheels and the tires. Um, I even modified, check this out. These rims are really nice because they already have the brake and then a, and a sprocket. But the problem is, is the sprocket's held on by the brake, by the brake bolts. If we're going to test all of these sprockets, well, guess what? We need adapters. So I had to modify an adapter uh, to fit on here. So you can kind of see some of that process here uh, where I had to, you know, it was a one inch adapter. And what I had to do was shave it you know make it an inch and a quarter basically so that's that guy on there it's just kind of bolted on there right now um i wanted a chain tensioner that's gonna help go through all these sprockets and everything you know i got a silencer on the other side we got a ex good expansion chamber um it's ready to roll even so i did some uh some tape kind of grips and everything i mean it's this is this is exciting to me. I'm super excited to get this rolling. But today's topic is lining and venting the gas tank. So you can see that I vented the gas cap and I modified it. In the other video, I had, uh, you know, just stuck some rubber from an inner tube in here. What I learned is uh, from L.A. Hover, he said, oh, that just swells up with gas. So get a paper gasket, which is, you know, gas doesn't mess with it at all. It's impervious to gas. Uh, and then I found some adapter and I got a vent on here. So it'll vent properly. And then inside the tank, I put red coat in there and coated the whole thing. So I'm just going to walk you through that process and show you what I did. Now I did it with the whole bike assembled because I was I was crunch time this week to get this bike together. I recommend so if you're going to line your tank, do it before you get it all put together because it was uh, really difficult to flip it around and move it over because the stuff cures pretty fast. So if you have the opportunity to do it before you get the bike together, that's the best time. But, you know, uh, if you have a bike and you and it's leaking or whatever and you want to you want to uh, line it, you can do it, too. But it would have been a lot easier uh, if I had done it beforehand. Live and learn, right? Gas cap off, as you can see in there. It's a brand new tank, so you can see how shiny silver it is. It's really clean and new, so we're good to go. So all I did was took some heavy plastic, took the pet cock out, put this around it, screwed it back up in there. That way it plugs the hole while I'm sloshing it around. Then what I'll do is I'll just pull the whole thing out and it'll drain all of the remaining red coat out of there and I'll just put it into a container and then we'll clean up the threads and everything once everything's cured. Another thing I'm gonna do when I pour, you know, I pour the stuff in it and then I smooth the bike around to slosh it around in the interior. So I'm gonna take a sandwich bag, place it over the nozzle and then put my cap back on. That way the inside of my cap doesn't get all red coated. All right, here we go. Can of red coat fuel tank liner. We're gonna pour, oh, maybe probably half of it in there. It's pretty runny stuff. So it'll slosh around the tank, you know, or evenly coat the tank really nice. And then we'll drain out the remainder. Then you can reuse this, they say. 
The reason why I'm doing it outside is so it's a fully built bike and I just don't have room in the shop to flip it <laughs> all different ways. So what I'm gonna do is pour the stuff in, tip it on its back, tip it forward, go back again level, and I'll lay it on a side and then another side and then roll it around like a dog, <laughs> you know, doing rollovers, okay? Kind of let it sit like that, then put it back upright, pull the plug on, you know, the petcock, basically pull the petcock out uh, and let it, the excess drain out into a bucket. Let's do it. All right, the results. Kind of see in there, a little bit, anyway. Uh, so basically, it gets gooey within like 20 minutes and drains in the bucket like that. So it's pretty much done, it's gooed up, but I feel good about the coating, but yeah, once it sets up, it sets up. <laughs> see by that? That is an example of how it sets up. See that? stringy <laughs> so you got to be prepared so it doesn't cure on you too fast all right so i brought it back in the shop you can see that it uh nice and coated in there I gotta tell you coming out of here <laughs> stuff likes to drip and make kind of a mess and jump on your stuff on your paint so they had a warning on there that uh, they're like, hey, if you got any artwork and all that, like you're better off doing it before. And they were right because it um, you think it's all cured and it's not coming out of, you know, the outlet. But then little dribbles will come out when you move it around and all that. So definitely um, pay attention to even when you think it's done, it still could drip. So. Uh, you know, kind of my seat tube here got on there, which I have a solution for. I'm just going to clean it up the best I can. Here you can see lightly, won't come off. Instead of painting it, I have this car wrap that's like a brushed, you know, gray aluminum kind of color that'll match it really well. And I'll put that on the seat stay and make it more of a graphic thing that's real subtle, you know, so then it'll look nice and I don't have to paint and all that nonsense. I actually like when things like that happen because uh, then, you know, I get to fix it. And I always think of creatively fixing things. I don't think of, oh, it's terrible and it ruined it and it's, you know, destroyed everything. I always think, mm, oh, well, how can I creatively fix it to make it look really cool? So that's what I'm going to do. There. So we're gonna vent the gas cap. As you can see, there's already an indentation and a center point marked. So we're gonna actually tap a pretty large, <laughs> pretty large hole in it. That's because, let's see here, the, the two, so here's my 
Here's my vent. When I was at the hardware store, I found this one here, which is pretty big, right? This is my first one, but I couldn't find a tap with the fine threads like this. So we are, we got the next best thing. It's a lot bigger. You can see the two compared to each other, but hey, who cares, right? Let's just uh, drill this out and then tap it. So we got our tap, we got our new freshly drilled gas cap, a wrench for turning our tap. Really, we're just gonna go to town threading it. All right, I traded out the silver one for this blue one. Um, push it on here. All right, so the trick to getting this to seat down there all the way, because these are plumbing fittings, so they're tapered, okay? They're not just straight. So you can see that this tap, so I got red, <laughs> red tank uh, coating on my fingers here. But if you notice this red tap, it flares up and out. So it's wider up here than it is down here. Only when I buried it, and you could see where I buried it to, where it's shiny silver and then it's black up here. So I buried it to there. Only then did it, you know, basically bury all the way into there and seal. And that's good because then you have this little lip. So when we put our paper guys in there, we can cut out that center and it'll seal and then gas won't splash out the threads and you know keep from splashing out there and only vent properly so pretty cool huh so to mark the paper and just push it down in here until it dents see the hole then we'll pull it back out But basically circle out like that. this so this is the backer this is the actual one in there we'll kind of lay them over I'm pretty good at guessing these things so I'm just gonna go free-handed And if I'm wrong, I'll just make another one, right? Now for a bigger one, this one's a little more oversized to fit in there. Kind of tore it a little bit there, but not too worried about it. Can always replace it later if it gives me fits. With two layers, I think we're probably pretty good. There we go. One vented gas cap. Nice. There you go. Now you know how to line your tank and vent your gas cap. I'm excited because now the F Zero is ready for all the stuff we've got coming in the months ahead. We got a ton planned out. So like, comment, subscribe. Let me know things below. Like if you've lined your tank, uh, if you vented a gas cap and you have a method that I hadn't tried here that I didn't show here, let me know. So thank you so much for watching this. I want to specifically thank the Motorized Bicycle family for helping me this week. I posted in there, hey, how do you mount this engine lower in the frame and all that? And people just flooded it with, uh, you know, their experience and really helped me along. So thank you, Motorized Bike community. I appreciate you. I want you to have a blessed week. 
Let's roll.